Hey everyone, did you know that not all USB-C cables have USB 3 speeds? Today we're going to look at this cable and this cable and a bunch of other ones and we're going to compare and find out how to tell which cables are actually USB 2 cables even though they have a USB-C connector and USB 3 cables. This is a USB cable. It, most people would call this a USB Type-C cable because it has a Type-C connector. And you'll notice it has this beveled edge to it right here. If you look into that, you'll see some pins. Now I'm counting about four pins. There should be some in the middle for sure. And because it can be turned around, there should be an equal number of pins on the other side. Yeah, you can see it in there, all those pins. But notice that all the pins aren't filled out. Let me just quickly show you what another cable looks like that does have all the pins filled out. If you look at this connector, all 20 pins are filled. That's something interesting, right? Why does this one cable not have all the pins? So if you look in here, you can see there are four pieces of gold plated, I don't know, maybe copper. That's a typical USB 2.0 connection. This is a USB-C cable. It's only USB 2 compatible. And you might have had something like this come with your phone, because I'm pretty sure this one here came with my phone. Almost 100% sure of that. And the problem with this is that most people, like me, didn't realize that, that this came with your phone. It doesn't support the full speed. If you connect a USB 3 USB-C cable, to your phone, it will actually get a faster speed. And that's because this is not a high enough end cable for that. This is meant for charging only, and it only charges five volts. It's not gonna charge something like 100 volts. You'd have to get a thicker cable for that that is designed specifically for USB PD, which has to do with power. Now I wanna show you another cable that I was showing you earlier. This one here, I have, it's a very small cable actually, very short. And this one, when I plug it in, I'm able to take some data on it. And this cable is able to get at least 20 gigabits of USB. I think I've tested it with Thunderbolt 2, but I'm not 100% sure. But this cable also has all the pins filled out. This is the one we were looking at earlier. It's a very short one. It says USB 3.1 on the cable. I don't exactly know where I got this. I have some idea because I have two of these. But this cable can carry 20 gigabits of speed, which is great. That's fantastic. But you got to see how different it is from this one. There's a thickness difference as well. You can even feel it when you're feeling the wire. I mean, look at this piece here versus this piece here. There's a big difference between these two in thickness alone. But this one's short so it doesn't need to be as thick. If you want to use USB-C to USB-C at full bandwidth, you're gonna need a cable that supports it. This one in particular does, this one does not. It will restrict your devices to USB 2.0 speeds. I have other cables here. This is another one which I would only use for charging. When I bought these a long time ago, that these were all regular USB cables, and I didn't even think to look on the end to show you that this here has only four connectors there. Four connectors means USB 2. There's nothing in the back. If you want to look at a USB 3 cable, you can see it here. Not only is it blue, the blue doesn't really matter, but it does usually indicate USB 3. But if you look in the back, there are five other connectors. So there are four on the bottom and then five more in the back. So USB 3 has the USB 2 cables in it, and then it has five more high-speed connection cables. Why five and not four? I'm not sure. I'd have to look at the pinout. But this cable is very interesting because some cables that are USB 3 do not carry more than five gigabits. Now, I haven't tested this one in particular, but this is a, a USB 3 cable. So you can tell it's USB 3, even though it's black, by looking inside, and you can see the five pins in there on the back. So this is definitely USB 3. Also on this end, it has an extra piece at the top that you wouldn't find on a USB 2. All the high-speed connections are on this top bit. They're not in the bottom. The bottom is just slow speed only. It's the USB 2. You're not gonna get USB 3 with this unless you have something that can take the top. And you can only plug this into something with the top. So it fixes that problem. Now, this cable most likely is only 5 gigabit. I don't think it can do 10 gigabit or higher. And when you connect a device over this cable, and it, if it doesn't support 10 gigabit, it will not connect over 10 gigabit. It does this automatically. And there's a good example. If I connect anything to this extension cable, this extension cable will limit a 10 gigabit device to 5 gigabit because this is a 5 gigabit only cable. Now, how does it know? Is it there's some circuitry in here or over here? I'm not sure how it knows. I just know that if I plug something in that is USB 10 gigabit into this 5 gigabit cable, it will be put down into 5 gigabit mode. And I have software that helps me figure that out. I have a lot of cables here that I'm looking at. I mean, these are just the ones we've looked at so far right here. And I have plenty more where this came from. So here's one that came with one of my presenters from Logitech. This is a charging only cable. It is very thin. That's one indicator. This one does have all the pins though. If you were able to look in here, it has all the pins inside of there. But this connector on the end is USB 2 only. And we can see that if we look inside because there are only four pins in there. There's nothing else. Only four pins inside of it. Now this cable, this is another USB 2 cable. And this is micro USB. Micro USB is only 2.0 speeds. There is a version of micro USB that is 3.0 speeds. I could show you that. It has a little bit of extra connector to the end, but I don't think it's important to show you because my goal is showing you USB-C. But what I wanted to point out is that this, this cable here is thicker than the charging cable that came with my phone. And this only does 2.0 speeds. 
It just happens to have a little bit more oomph to the cable. If you see a cable this thin, it's most likely only 2.0. I mean, you can check the connector on the end. You can check the connections and uh, all the wires in here just to make sure. But you, the best way to find out what the speed a cable has once you've purchased it is to run it through some software that tells you what the output is of that cable. It'll tell you what the speed is. And I can show you that software as well. So this is a USB 3 cable. We can tell it's blue. We can also look inside of it and tell. I mean, I, I don't have to show you every time, but this one's got those extra pins in the back and then the four in the front. It's hard to see the four in the front with the reflections, but there are four in the front, the same USB 2.0 pins, and then in the back there are five more. That, that's how they use the same connector to get USB 3 and USB 2. Now, this one here has a label on it. It says SS10. That means it's a 10 gigabit USB cable. So if I plug this into a connection on a port that has 20 gigabit, it will still give me 10 because this connector on the end. But if I plug this into a 5 gigabit port, it's still only going to be 5 gigabit. I have to plug this into a 10 gigabit port on both sides. The device that connects to this end has to support 10 gigabit and the device on this end has to support 10 gigabit for it to be 10 gigabit. But you can only use this cable. You can't use any extensions. As far as I know, there seems to be some kind of limit of how long the cable can be to get certain speeds unless you have active cables or you have some kind of fiber optics so this is another one that one is 10 gigabit i have tested it and there's another one i have here i can't remember exactly what speed this can do i think this can do 10 gigabit it's unmarked i'm pretty sure i got this from monoprice but if i tested it i could tell you this might even be able to do thunderbolt speeds which is really nice which is 40 gigabit why probably because it's thicker and it's USB-C to USB-C. Typically, USB-C to USB-C cables tend to carry a faster speed. So before I was saying, because of this A connector, you cannot do 20 gigabit with your USB. A lot of devices in general don't support 20 gigabit USB, but I have some that do. The reason you can't do 20 gigabit with this connector is because it's not supported by the hardware. No hardware that has this connector supports 20 gigabit. It's not that you couldn't do it physically, but it's that they've restricted the 20 gigabit to this side and you have to, only certain devices do it. I have some NVMe drive readers. Those are the only thing that do 20 gigabit that I have. If I use this cable, I think I'm still restricted down to 10 gigabits. I have to use a special USB-C to USB-C cable because the connector needs to be USB-C on both ends. So something like this cable to be able to get that kind of speed. But this cable isn't all that's going to work because this cable physically might not be able to carry a 20 gigabit signal. And that reminds me now why I have this short one. This short one came with the 20 gigabit NVMe readers. And that's why it can carry a 20 gigabit signal. And I think a 40 gigabit Thunderbolt signal too, but I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I'd be risking it if I tried that. It could create too much heat. It could cause a problem with the cable. I'm not sure. But this one most likely does not. I think this can do up to 10, but I'm not 100% sure. And then I have this cable here came with an eGPU I purchased. This is a Thunderbolt 3 cable, which can do 40 gigabit. Thunderbolt 4 also does 40 gigabit. As far as I know, there's no difference between the two. If you get a Thunderbolt 3 or a Thunderbolt 4 cable, they're exactly the same, but I'm not 100% sure. So don't quote me on that. And this cable does have all the connectors in the end. It's exactly the same. You can use this on a USB. You can use this on a Thunderbolt. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. You can use all these other cables on Thunderbolt 2, but it might not work correctly or the Thunderbolt might be hampered in some way. And this is a very short cable. I do have longer Thunderbolt 3 cables like this one, and I have a longer Thunderbolt 4 cable, which I'm actually using on the eGPU right now, just because I feel like it'll be more resilient. But this is one I got from Apple. It is a Thunderbolt 3 cable. It doesn't say anything about it, but it is a Thunderbolt 3 cable with USB-C to USB-C. Now, I don't wanna say USB-C because that's not accurate. What I should be saying is Type-C to Type-C. That's really what this connector is called. It's called a Type-C connector. USB-C just happens to be the USB version of the Type-C connector, which is exactly the same, but maybe made to slightly different specifications. And if I remember correctly, this cable can do power delivery as well, because the other cable I have also does power delivery. I think all the Thunderbolt cables can do power delivery, but the USB ones necessarily won't unless they support USB PD, USB power delivery. That power delivery is like 100 watts. It might be more, with Thunderbolt 4, I'm not sure about that, but the power delivery is up to 100 watts as far as I know. And this is another adapter I have. This is a very small one. It looks like a dongle, right? Because it is a dongle. And then right here, you have a small connector with all the wires in it. And then on this side, you have a USB type A plug. So this this actually, this cable is one way. Technically, it's two way because USB is two way. But if I plug this end into a device and this end into my PC through a type A to type A cable, it won't work. But if I plug this end into my PC, and this end into the device, that works fine. It's interesting. I mean, you can use this for your phone. I've used this on my phone. I've used this on my tablet to get like a capture card in there because I don't have one of these ports on my tablet. So I have to use one of these cables. It says on, on it, if you read it, it doesn't have any label, but it supports 10 gigabits, which is really nice. That's why one of the reasons I bought this particular one, even though it didn't look as nice as some of the other cables, it does support 10 gigabits. And I was able to verify that through software. So that's showing you some of the USB and Thunderbolt cables. USB and Thunderbolt are essentially the same standard now. If you look up USB 4, it's essentially Thunderbolt 3. 
three. It's the same thing at this point. Not 100%, but it's the same thing. And the only difference is that it has a little bit different things that it needs to support because it needs to be backwards compatible with USB, whereas Thunderbolt does not, but it is anyway. It does the data transferring differently because Thunderbolt has to have some kind of connection to your PCI Express lanes on your motherboard, whereas USB is a separate chip that data can go through. Thunderbolt is also a separate chip, but USB is slightly different in how it gets handled. If you look at the pinouts, they're almost identical though. There are four low speed lines in the middle of the cable, and we can look at the pinout at some point, but the uh, outer lines have power, the high speed are right next to those, and then the inside is slow speed. And what's interesting about these C type C connectors is that there are two sets of low speed wires. There are four total, and USB does use four, but it doesn't just use four for data. It uses two for data, and then two, one for power, one for ground. So I'm wondering if Thunderbolt and USB-C support two sets of USB 2.0 transfer speeds. You essentially get double the bandwidth when you're using one of those. I'm not sure. I'm just saying they have four sets of wires, so it would make sense that they would support more speed instead of only two sets of wires. There are a lot of devices I have that are USB-C and they are only 2.0 speeds, like the Focusrite Scarlett SIS. That microphone preamp is only USB 2.0 speeds. Even though it's USB type C connector, it is only 2.0 speeds. The only USB 3 device I have out of every device I own that is ever connected to my computer is actually my capture card. That's the only one that I have. Now I got another camera, which I'm using down here. And that camera is also USB-C. And as far as I know, it does use the USB 3 lanes. So it, it does require USB 3 instead of USB 2. And I can tell that because the adapter that came with it. You know what? I'm wrong. Uh, but that I still might be right. But the adapter that came with it is this. The, the one online that I saw in the picture uh, had blue on the end. But this one has white, which means it's most likely 2.0. And I looked inside and it's very hard to show it. But this only has four pins in there. So this adapter that they gave me for USB-C to USB to plug it into your computer is only 2.0, which means the camera itself might only be 2.0. I hope you learned something from that video. Not all cables are created equal. And that sucks. I did not know that this cable and others like it are USB 2. And that's why my phone connected to my computer was always so much slower than it should have been. And now I know to use cables like this or even faster cables because I will get much faster speeds. As long as my phone supports those faster speeds. And typically phones today do support those faster speeds, especially over a type C connection. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe. I got more stuff coming. There's plenty of videos and there's even going to be another part on this where I actually go look at windows and go into the software side of things and show the connection speed of all these wires. All right. Thanks. See you then.